Hey there, Chris and Mike here. We're going to do another video with you guys. And this one's a little bit different than our others because uh, for right now we've been doing these YouTube videos for about almost two years. Because yeah, we started back in Canada, right? We did, yes. And uh, one of the things that we've been saying right from the very beginning is um, we're going to donate every single cent we make from these videos. So because you guys watch and you make us money, I'm going to show you one of the places where the money goes today. And um, I'm going to let Mike introduce our friends here. Yep. And at the end of the video, we're going to go through all the money we've made up until now on the channel and all of the other places that we've donated as well. But today we're going to talk about what they call the 360 Business Academy in San Jose. So if you've been watching the channel, you know San Jose is our local community right down there. We're sitting in our living room, but San Jose is right down there um, at the beach. So today we're going to talk to Kathy and Tanya. Tanya, you remember, um, she owns the Samai Lodge and Spa up on the hill over there, uh, one of our neighbors, and she's also an important part of the 360 uh, Academy. And we're going to be talking to Kathy, who runs not only the 360 program, but also a major charity, which we're going to also have some other videos about that's local to the area. So why don't we start about a little bit of background, Kathy, on so where did the 360 program get started? And I know we're on our second class now, so maybe talk a little bit about its early beginnings. Thank you, Mike. Thank you so much, both of you, Mike and Chris, for inviting us here today to talk about our program. We are extremely excited about the new class. But the program started back in about 2022. Um, shortly after my mother and stepfather and I arrived here in Ecuador and we were working with, as you mentioned earlier, the, um, our nonprofit. But because we live in the community here, the same place where you live, um, we wanted to see how we could help our specific community. And one of the things that we spent time doing is um, touring the community, talking to the community leaders, and some of the friends that we had made um, here in Ecuador. And they expressed to us some of the challenges um, as we were coming out of the pandemic. Many of the new, um, or the, the people were just starting to be able to start their businesses. A lot of the youngsters or young adults were actually moving out of the community because of lack of job prospects. Um, because tourism is a major, or, you know, when things are good before the pandemic, tourism is a major aspect of the economy in these beach towns. Right? Absolutely correct. And of course, that came to a complete standstill when everything shut down. So we came in at a, the, the point in time where they were, the communities were just starting to open up. And what the primary um, information that we learned in speaking to the Kamuna leadership was that they needed help with their um, small businesses getting back on their feet and they identified um, the what we call I call them the cabanas which are basically the restaurants that line the Malacan or the the beach area that service um, the visitors to the community um, and because of my background, as well as my mother's background, um, we thought that one of the ways we could help would be to form a class to help with um, their marketing skills of the um, San Jose community. They wanted to be able to learn how to draw in individuals. Um, and, I, and, I, and I think that uh is really important no matter what country you're in you get these very enthusiastic business owners 
So remember, Chris, when we were back in Canada, it was a very similar thing, not so much with COVID, but you'll have business owners, usually restaurant people who are very enthusiastic about their restaurant, but really don't have the business skills mm -hmm. to be able to run a business, which is different than running a restaurant. Exactly. There's the whole financial side of things and how to sustain that. And I, and I think one of the things you guys just did fantastic that I was reading about the program is how you have the speakers who come into the class are fundamentally successful business owners for multiple years here. Like, so Tanya, you started out being one of the speakers, right? And yes. You've been in business, if I correct from the other video, like over 20 years here. Right. Sustainable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been here. Thank you, both you. Thank you, Kathy, as well. Which, with Kathy, we make a great team. Um, yeah, I met Kathy and Carol like more than two years ago, and then you know, as part of the San Jose community, we get a lot of enthusiasm for for their uh, motivation to help the community. And uh, as a owner of a lodge, you know, just get motivated to, to support and participate uh, and share my experience with the local community because yeah, tourism is very important. You know, remember that $1 in tourism is $1 to the community. Those are the statistics. So when that thing grow, everybody grows. And when that doesn't happen, you know, we all struggle. So they came up with this great idea of first the microcredit for these little towns. That was fantastic. And after that, uh, looking at the egg, the success of that process, they create the 360 program, which is like growing deeper into training and learning how to manage uh, marketing, uh, etc. cetera, uh, a little uh, project, a little uh, business. So yeah, I am so happy to be part of this uh, uh, idea and ideal in the community, like you guys, you know, with your presence here in the San Jose communities, like this, we are creating a real community and a, a real unity, you know, yes. with uh, yes. putting hands together to, exactly. to go, to, yeah. to keep this place uh, and nice and clean and safe. Yeah. At the conclusion of the course, each student presented a marketing plan, received funds to implement the plan, and celebrated the class graduation with a party, Ecuadorian style. <laughs> During the six months since the class conclusion, the full tables at the new cabanas are a testament to the students' embrace of the marketing concepts introduced during the course. It is with absolute pride that Collins and Cole report a 100% repayment rate on the small grant given to the cabana owners. Everyone involved in the development of the pilot program is eager to implement the next phase of Academy which will be geared towards female business leaders who wish to take bold steps towards a brighter future by building non-traditional businesses to further sustain the San Jose. I think one of the one of the things I really liked about the program, um, in addition to what you talked about, was how you sort of, you know, you give them the skills by, by, you know, teaching them, by having the instructors come in, but at the same time they get to do things, because they did get a, a, a loan, essentially, right? So maybe Kathy, tell us a little bit about how that works. Yeah, what, what we did um, with our initial program, and we termed it the pilot program because we really wanted to make sure that we were doing something that the community actually needed and um, would benefit from. So we came up with the idea that we would teach the marketing skills, but in addition to the, the teaching the skills, we would provide a, um, a, little, a tiny little micro grant to help the students um, implement those marketing concepts that they had learned through the class. And this class was um, it was it was very short in duration. It was I actually remember how long it was, but I but uh, mm -hmm. we did um, just it was just a, a one a single month class where the students came. Um, what some some of the highlights of this class for me were that we initially intended to um, enroll fifteen students. We actually had seventeen students um, complete applications, and we enrolled. But it turns out by the end of the class, we actually graduated 24 students because there was so much enthusiasm that we had yes. individuals showing up for the class every um, 
night. Um, so we taught 24 adults, and then the 17 who had enrolled received um, a very small $250 uh, micro uh, loan. And, and, and part of that grant, um, because it's repayable, was intended to help teach budgeting skills. Um, that they could again use for their their marketing concepts that they learned um, in, within the class. Right. We did a lot of role playing. We had people um, learning how to um, develop marketing uh, materials. One of the th some of the things for us um, coming from the United States and from a, a very different background from what we found here is we had to make a adjustments when we taught the class and for example I will say one of the adjustments um, you know we just assumed that um, the, if our adult learners would have the types of skills that we feel adult learners in the right. states will yeah, have but many of our um, learners did not have um, internet uh, computer skills right. they had no access to the internet the statistics here in Ecuador indicate that um, only 22 percent of households have um, internet ex um, access um, uh, uh, gosh, about 43 percent of adults only have a secondary education which is high school so we had to modify um, our class that we had in initially intended to teach to fit our specific Great. students. <laughs> Borrow the money. Yes. And then they have to learn how to market and then they can pay the money back. Right. The way that the, 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 um, the class progressed is actually we taught the marketing skills and then we had a graduation ceremony and during the graduation ceremony every student um, who enrolled in the class and completed the class a prerequisite for um, obtaining the funds was they had to uh, complete the course they completed the course and they were granted the 250 dollars with a six-month repayment stipulation and to our Honestly, our surprise, we had a 100% repayment rate. Yeah. It was the That's idea that, that it's not just a handout. Right. This is, and we want um, everyone to learn how to manage and budget. And the, uh, part, the other part, the mm -hmm. part that goes along with this is that, again, here in Ecuador, many of the individuals that we work with, they have no access to credit. Mm -hmm. So obtaining um, even small loans is either out of the question or, unfortunately, right. a go-to oh, people that are not, interest. Yeah. don't have their best interests yet. Right, right. right. No, how else to say that? Yeah, no, exactly. Um, and then to this program, the 360 also got this very important that I think um, is about the selection of the students, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not like anyone can yes. come. You know, they have to have a background and responsibility. They have to show they, they really want and be responsible because we are donating our time, our classes, our experience, of resources like that. And so it has to be some something very, you know, like a, a nice, uh, to so before the second, uh, the um, just to go get a little bit of background for the first class, we relied heavily on the community leadership to help right. us with the uh, selection of the students. Mm -hmm. I want I, you have to remember that we were very new to the community, right. and one of the things that was very very important to us is that we wanted to rely on individuals like Tanya and the community leaders to tell us what they wanted and how we could help them. We did not want to impose our ideas. Outside group of expats. Yeah. 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 This is how we're going that's to change exactly. things around here. Yeah. Like, yeah. Not yeah. Well. And, and that's so still... Based on the reality. Yeah. They need so it's a partnership them. with the local community. With the community. local yeah. community. Yeah. Yeah. Like, for instance, we can think that, oh, they need the, the water system, but maybe not. Maybe they need something else, but we... You would not, so I think and, that's very important. And I will say, and that's part of why we taught marketing because we did uh, it, it, our initial intention was to um, have a class to teach bis plan business planning. So it, well, I had all developed an entire course for teaching how to 
um, create your business plan. And, it, and in talking to everyone, it, you know, they didn't need that. What they needed were the um, information on how we can pull people into our existing businesses or the businesses that we had been operating prior to the, the shutdown. So we just started the second class, so the second right, in class. July. How is that different from the first class? Actually, um, well, the second class is expanded, and the second class um, expansion came about by, again, speaking with the leaders and doing um, interviews with our former students who told us that they loved what they learned in the first class, but they wanted more. They needed more information, more ways that they could grow the businesses. So um, more help with the planning, more help. They, they Actually, one of the things that they loved is they loved the role-playing interaction we did. Participation. Participation. No, not just sit and listen, but just, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. A, very good way to education. Yeah. Um, we that their um, participation and learning how yeah. to interact with the various types of tourists that come to the community, not just tourists from this country, but tourists from all over the world actually come here, and we and we know because we're from other parts. Yeah, people of the world. don't realize uh, have, the high season here. When you sit at any of the restaurants along the beach. There's someone from Czech Republic could be at one table, mm -hmm. someone yeah. from Russia, France, another, yeah. Germany, Germany, all Europe discovered it's not just mm -hmm. those crazy Canadians and Americans yeah. down here. <laughs> <laughs> and they need help interacting with all those people, all yeah. those different people, because yeah. they're they're not familiar with our customs and yeah. and um, and for uh, we saw an incredible opportunity and okay, you're not you're not interacted in a way that's going to earn you yeah. some more money. <laughs> we, that's yeah. the, the most yeah. important thing. Yeah. We want yeah. them to build sustainable businesses mm -hmm. that will help them um, to be able to, to not just support their families, but to get, set an example for the younger generation. I mean, the other thing that uh, I feel that is really important is that we want to be able to provide the skills for the, the young adults so that they can see that there is a, a path to, to staying here in San Jose. There really is viability. There's so much, as you all know because you're here, there's so much natural beauty, there's so much a cultural lot of history, yes. there's a lot of potential to share this with um, those that yeah. come in and to make a living doing yeah. so. I think that's so important um, what you say about the culture because all the, the idea of this program is to empower people, you know, empower people in their culture, in their belief system and who they are, you know, to give them the strength to empower them, you know, to start valuing themselves yes. and don't be shy because that's one of the reasons sometimes if they don't know how to deal with people from other countries because they're shy. And maybe they feel like they're not enough, but all these these programs are to, to help them to enforce their 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 capacities, their gifts, and the, as you say, Katy, this is so beautiful and there's a lot of potential. And and um, I think these kind of programs are going to help the future generations. Mm -hmm. and to go back to your oh sorry, I'm interrupting yeah. you. To go back to your original question about how we're making this this. The second thing is different is exactly what Tanya said. We want to be able to uh, show the students um, that it is possible to have sustainable businesses here, but not just to tell them through an, a foreigner that we're saying, yes, right. you can do it, but bringing in the successful business owners that have been here operating in the community for several years, people that are the city. You know, essentially the same as they are. They have the same backgrounds from the same country, speak the same language, um, you know. Um, and kind of face the same challenges. Like one of the challenges right. on the coast mm -hmm. here is we do have a low season and a high season. Mm -hmm. So you'd be thinking, oh, life is great in the high season. Everyone's sitting at your restaurant or going to your lodge or whatever. And then there's a low season, which isn't, uh, you know, we think, oh my God, what's happened? And uh, in a lot of tourist areas around the world, it's similar to yes. that. And so running a business, you need to know, how do I survive the low season so I can make my money right. in the high season? Absolutely. And that will be a big focus of our training this time. We are um, the class has been expanded um, from 12 hours to actually 12 week, uh, 
we have a three month course mm -hmm. and um, we have at this point we have six um, guest lecturers uh -huh. from the business community we intend to focus um, quite a bit on English skills that's one of the yeah. um, requests that we have more English more English more English uh, um, again the micro grant for our students that complete the class but we are going to also couple that with ongoing mentoring um, since uh -huh. and we have we're going to pair the students with the idea. teachers mm -hmm. That's yeah fantastic. and also you know Kathy, um, we're doing this in San Jose but the idea is to go to the other communities mm -hmm. that's not yeah. near Escoria yeah. or Entrada in this area you know like why not you know for the next expand the teaching class the 360 to these other places so that's why we absolutely so this so this program potential. sorry go ahead no no that's good so this program's all run under uh spirit of wellness uh organization right and and you're basically run every program that's almost under uh, <laughs> <laughs> under yeah. that spirit of wellness yeah, yeah. so yeah i'm the the yeah um yeah spirit of wellness is the um non yeah. that i um here in ecuador i am the program director for yeah. that and for all intents and purposes yes i'm yeah. it here yeah. in ecuador yeah. and <laughs> that's the <laughs> local and i want people to understand this is not some huge org no, organization no, no. it's very local hands-on work please yes. check out their website i'm going to put that in the uh comment i'm also going to put uh um, tanya's uh Samai lodge in there if you want to check out that and also check out our other video about uh, about that so i have another question for you is if somebody wanted to um, be part of this 360 program um how could they help like, you mean can, donate? Can they don't just donate, or can they come and oh, donate, okay. or can they actually come and help you monitor, uh, me oh, me men mentor somebody, uh, teach them? Like how absolutely. Do actually, <laughs> thank you for asking. By the way, one of the components of our program this time is I'm calling it the cultural ambassadors. Is I we intend to have um, an, at least, it's at least one evening, depending upon how many helpers we receive, come in and speak to our students about um, their expectations as a visitor to the community. Um, and this will involve them, of course, sharing their experiences here in Ecuador, as well as explaining what they would like to see. And um, we hope to do a lot of role playing when we have those types That's of visitors. Great. So absolutely, we That's would great. welcome um, if you are Anybody here. wants to come and help? Yeah, if you are and here in the community and, and you're interested right. in doing that, we have set aside time for that. And I will tell you from our previous experience, that one of the, the the classes where we do the role playing and the interaction is one of the most well received classes. I mean, everybody's it's so joyful. Everybody's giggling and laughing, but in it also learning, learning quite a bit. And as Tanya mentioned earlier, when she was talking about um, people feeling shy, it's also very empowering because it helps that um, our students feel comfortable. And that's a big part of it is um, many of them don't have the, um, the experiences that we take for granted interacting with a lot of different people from different parts of the world. Um, so having them to come out of their shell will help with the customer service aspect that is so important when they are trying to build a business and and they and it's them it's really on them as the sole proprietor or them and their families many of the um the um students in our class it's not just the women many of them are women we have a very high ratio of women in our class but it's them, it's it maybe their spouse, um, it's often their children um, that help in the businesses. Right. So they're all, they all get to uh, learn to be comfortable. Yeah. So how would someone who wants to donate be able to do that? And, and I think, uh, you know, one of the key things to understand is that, you know, 20, 50, $100 uh, that gets donated uh, in Ecuador goes a long way. It's not like donating for some operation in Canada or Europe or something here. Uh, it really makes a huge difference uh, in the community. So how about, uh, how, how would they go about doing that? If you um, are not here, 
it locally, um, you may go to our website, which is www.spiritofwellness.org, um, and there's a donate button right on the top of the screen there. There you go. There's, <laughs> try to make it easy for you. <laughs> and um, if you're American, it's a charitable donation absolutely. as well from yes. a tax perspective. We so are. Point that out. Abso yes. Absolutely. We are a 501c3 um, nonprofit registered in the United States, so any donations made through our website, you will be um, that they're tax exempt. And it's credit um, card and PayPal, if I understand. We accept correctly. credit cards, um, bank accounts, and PayPal. Yes, you can use those options. If you are here in Ecuador and you'd like to donate directly to us, um, you're welcome to contact me via WhatsApp or also through the website if you'd like to. And I'll put your contact information, information up. Yeah. Um, and I will make arrangements to meet with you. Absolutely. And if you go on that Spirit of Wellness uh, website, which I highly recommend you do, you, you do, you'll see there's all kinds of other programs as well, and there's opportunities there for volunteering and all other kinds of ways that you can help out the local community uh, if you're already here. Absolutely. If you're here in Ecuador and you're along the coast, um, we have we operate a food bank. We operate a weekly senior lunch. We, of course, our 360 program as we're discussing today. We would love to have you visit us and join us. Join the fun, as I say. So if somebody wants to come and, and participate and help yes. out in anything, they can just go to that website and it makes a big difference. And uh, people's lives. Send you an email. They send me. Send we, um, They can send an email. They can send a WhatsApp. The contact information is available on the website. Uh, again, the contact me and it goes directly to me. So I will respond to you. Yeah, everything comes directly to me. Thanks so much for joining us today, both of you. Oh, thank you Very so much. Very much appreciated. <laughs> thank you to everything. you to open this space, you know, to to, to share what uh, you know we're doing for the community, what Kathy and her foundation is doing, and putting us together. That's very important. Thank Thanks you. a lot. <laughs> Love you guys. Love what you're doing. Remember, so we said we would talk about what we've made on the channel and where all that money goes. We talked a little bit um, about the 360 program because that's one of the places where it goes. Yep. So why don't you cover off? Why don't we just go with the total of how much we made? Okay. Of how much we made all together? Yeah. Well, I need that piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> you need that piece of paper? You don't have it off the top of your head? So, all together, we have made $1,394.54. Yeah. So, basically, we make about a, roughly about $100 a month it averages out to. Um, we got monetized last year in May. We started getting deposits in June. And sometimes the deposits are a little less than 100. Sometimes they're more than 100. Because we're Canadian, we had to use a Canadian uh, YouTube account. So we actually get paid in uh, Canadian dollars and then we move it over to US dollars. So that, that 13, yeah. That 1390 US. is, yeah, 1394 yeah. is US dollars. So the first time we gave was oh, last yes. December, right? Yes, we gave $400 to the San Jose Children's Christmas Party. And we actually attended that. Yeah, that was and crazy. <laughs> it, was a lot, it was a lot of fun. And I heard yeah. that that was probably one of the better um, Christmas, Christmas parties, parties that yeah. they had because the kids had a bouncy castle that they didn't have before. The popcorn machine. The popcorn machine was a hit. And everyone and all the kids got a present, which they normally do. So, yeah. uh, and there's also some other expats who gave some money uh, for that Christmas to party too. And see our fine dancing skills because they made us get up there and dance. Yes, yes. <laughs> so that was, was that was great to sort of see, you know, firsthand. And, and uh, so how we pick, pick things, we actually, um, work directly with the president of the communa here so that's maria and she kind of lets us know every few months uh if we're ready to donate more what some of the possibilities could be and then we sort of pick from that and we also work with um with kathy who you've met earlier in this video as to you know what their needs are and where we would be able to uh fit within those so those are sort of the two places rather than creating our own infrastructure mm -hmm. <laughs> of some type of charitable donation we we decided to go the route let's 
let's use what's already there. Let's work with directly with the organizations and the local community. Yeah. Okay, enough rambling here. What was the so, second? So the 360 program. Yep. We gave $400 for, for that For cause. that program. Yep. So that's yep. going to be going towards the second um the second class, which is just starting starting now. Now, yeah. Yeah, and then our third donation. We gave $350 to the San Jose Swing Set for the park. Yeah, Swing Set for the park. So so that was really in what they call New Aurora, mm -hmm. which is just around the corner. A suburb, I guess you would call <laughs> it, using American Canadian terms of San Jose. So San Jose proper is uh, is on the beach. And then when you sort of go across our little highway here, our road, and then on the other side of that uh, road back into the jungle more is this little community called New Aurora, uh, all being managed by the same mayor and everything and part of San Jose. Uh, but it is a slightly different uh, community where we go walking every yeah. once in a while. Yeah, we and, do. Yeah. Uh, and we have friends there as well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so they have a swing a swing set uh, that we purchased. They uh, did um, like a whole park in that really. Yeah. So we we did the swing set part. But yeah. The community all got together as well, and they put it all together. So yeah. Pe that keeps people employed as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. And that's what we try and do. Um, when you hear about the next one, is that anything that we try and give. We like to sort of what I call sort of get double bang for your buck. So they get the result of what the money is, but at the same time, it it the money gets spent in the community. Provides so a job for provide someone. So the last one, Chris. We just gave $300 for a sign in San Jose. Yeah, so we understand the sign is going to be near the uh, football field. And so where the buses are that pick up people or drop them off, something like that anyway. It hasn't been built yet. This was the latest one. But that's an example of where, you know, people in San Jose will be building building the sign. So they get the sign, uh, but they also get the employment uh, for, for building that. Yeah. And remember, so, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say the, the total of yep. that. Yeah. <laughs> so the total of that is uh, 1450 So we're actually in the hole right now. Yeah, about like, $128. So $28. keep watching. <laughs> so, yeah. Hit the like and subscribe button. Yeah, yeah. So that's keep what we donating. that's what we kind of do is is we'll is we'll spend that. We don't really keep the money for very long. Once it gets up to about three or four hundred dollars, then we'll either contact uh, Maria or contact Kathy and figure out you know where we want to give at that particular yeah. time the next three or four hundred. Um, so so we are in a you know the channel is a is a niche channel and I'll show you some graphs. Uh, of the channel because you might be interested in sort of seeing how the money gets generated based on the number of views. So you can see from this chart, uh, this is the actual revenue since uh, we started the channel. And you can see it has big spikes. Well, those big spikes are based on the views of new videos that just came out. So we normally put out a video once a week. Um, the Chris and Mike videos are every two weeks and Ecuador News is, is alternating uh, weeks. And so you can see that if we did want to do this full time, you would um, put out more videos uh, every probably three or four days once one of those spikes go down. Um, a lot of channels that are not niche channels, those spikes would not exist. It just shows growth of the videos that you've done and they can make a lot more money um, the bigger audience that you have. But we have a pretty small audience so when they're done viewing them those spikes go right back down again. Um, as great as Ecuador is, there's not millions and millions of people who are watching uh, videos on Ecuador and wanting to potentially move here. <laughs> right? So that's sort of the niche that we have. Um, what a lot of YouTubers do who want to do this full time um, and make money as their only income, they will then expand it. So, for example, we would uh, expand into, oh, do you want to move to Colombia? Do you want to move to Panama? Do you want to move to Costa Rica? And we would go and, you know, visit those countries and do videos of, of those. And that would uh, greatly enhance how much money the uh, channel makes. But that's not something we're interested in. This money that we collect is really for the uh, community. Um, and uh, that's about it. Let's uh, look at one other chart. 
So just before we end the video, I thought you'd be interested in seeing, you know, where do our viewers come from? So in the lifetime of our channel, you can see uh, from the United States, we're about 62% from Canada, just over 14% from Ecuador, which is a split between expats who are already here, um, as well as um, Ecuadorians, um, because we get a lot of comments from Ecuadorians, um, you know, quite happy about how we talk about, uh, you know, the positive aspects of Ecuador. And of course, the UK and Mexico, um, very small amounts. Anyway, you guys, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to like and subscribe if you want more videos like this one. And most of all, uh, remember, live the life you love.